if you have small young humans in your life and you've been curious about how to navigate your personal weight loss adventure with them, well, stick around because today I'm going to share with you how I talked about this with my son. Thank you so much for being here and hanging out with me today. If you're one of my returning friends, hi, thanks for being here. And if you're new here and you don't know, I am on an adventure to leave 100 pounds in my past. If that's an adventure that you want to come along with, please be sure and subscribe before you leave. And if you want to continue hanging out after the video, be sure and check me out on my socials. I have Instagram and Fitbit and I do things usually, but life is happening right now, so I'm a little slow. But find me there and we can continue to be friends. Thank you so much if you do. This topic of talking about weight loss to kids, I'm not sure if it's something that anyone else struggled with, but it's definitely something that was a little bit triggering to me when I decided that I was done being in a large body and was going to work toward a big change. A hundred pounds is a big change. I knew it's something I was going to have to discuss with my son, but I didn't want to inadvertently, inadvertently implant any type of negative association with a high scale number or a large body. So I think we've done okay so far. And I thought that I would share my experience. Before I get into talking about how I discussed this with my son. Let me kind of rewind a little bit and preface this with, I have struggled with a disordered relationship with food and disordered eating probably my entire life, distinctly probably since the year 2000, which is 20 years, y'all. I have had very distinct disordered eating patterns for 20 years. So that's why I've been so cognizant of this topic. My parents did not set a stellar example for body positive and food positive relationships. I've said it in previous videos, but I really, I don't have any memory of my mom speaking positively about herself and her body and her confidence. And I have many memories of my dad basic, flat out saying, you need to go on a diet. There were times where my dad legit told me and my mom that we needed to go on a diet. I'm not sure if ever your fat ever came out, but everything surrounding the message was there. So this year in 2020, when I knew that I had to change my body, before I really started making really big strides towards that body shrinking goal, I legit sat down with myself and tried to think of how best to address it with my son. Because not only did I have to shrink my body, I also had to set a good healthy relationship for my son because that's something that I was not given. So in the past, I don't know if this is something I can count as a win, but it's definitely something my son has always complimented me on my squishy body. He has said since he was but a wee lad that he loves cuddling with me the best because I'm soft and squishy and daddy is rather hard and not squishy. And I'm going to take that as a win because at least for him, a softer, larger body has a positive association with love and acceptance. So I'm going to count that as a win. I do hope that those first seeds do stay with him for his life, knowing that size and shape and type of body doesn't equal the value of someone. And knowing that he has always loved that part of me 
I had to tread very carefully to make sure he didn't somehow feel wrong for feeling those feelings. When I first started my weight loss adventure, I didn't tell him. Actually, I didn't even tell my husband. I didn't tell anyone for a couple of weeks. I kind of, I needed to have that time to myself. But once I had taken enough time for myself and proven to myself that yes, this was it, this was the time, this is when I was going to lose it all, I knew that I had to address it. So I casually, while cuddling with my son one morning, kind of brought up to him that I'm going to be making my body less squishy. I didn't say losing weight. All of, our, all of his life, we've always tried to just, the number on the scale is data. When he was very young, because the scale is just in the bathroom, he would want to check his numbers, just checking his numbers. And obviously now, as he's older, he's 10 and a half, he understands that the number on the scale means how much he weighs. And I think that's fine. And I hope that we kind of keep it just at that, that bare minimum data level. I'm rambling, but yes. <laughs> so I would say things like I'm working on being less squishy or working on losing some of my squish. And inevitably he would ask why I, I love you squishy. You're the best cuddler. I love cuddling with you. I love you just the way you are very sweet. But I, I had to tell him that I know that you like my body this one way, but this, my body this way isn't healthy enough for me. I definitely really emphasized the health aspects of it. Never have I ever vocalized to him my dissatisfaction with the aesthetics. I never, ever wanted that to come into play for him. I don't want that on his radar, at least not planted by me. One thing that my son could tangibly understand was my snoring. He has made comments in the past, and you know, it was just the past few years that the apnea and the snoring came about, but he would make comments about how loud I would get. So I would reference that. I'm going to be smaller, so I'm not going to be as loud when I sleep. Just the other day, I think it was last week sometime, my son casually, like while we were eating dinner, asked me how much I had lost. He's like, mom, how much weight have you lost? In a completely innocent question. I just kind of laughed and I was like, uh, and my husband, bless him, jumped right in. That's not really something we ask people. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I did take that moment as a teaching moment and told my son that how much I've lost doesn't really matter. What matters is how I'm feeling, how healthy things are going. I did share the number with him at the end of it because he was curious and it's an honest question. So we definitely were, were working on tact, but I think that, that, ha you know, circles round to for him the number on the scale just being a data point there's no value or worth associated with that in summary all of these little nuggets and all these stories that i'm sharing i i had goals in mind the biggest goal is to not associate worth and value with size and number on the scale so everything that we discuss i always have that in the back of my mind. I am always working to make sure that my son sees humans for just being human and that their size doesn't determine anything but their size. And apparently, judging by last week's conversation, we have to work in a little bit of tact. <laughs> My other goal is to always model a healthy relationship with my body and my relationship with food. And I think with the food thing, we've done a good job because we've always emphasized listening to your body, kind of laying the groundwork and planting the seeds of being an intuitive eater and trusting your body to know what it 
needs. Yes, he's 10 and a half, so he always wants something from the pantry that's a little bit more sweet, something that's not a whole food. So he will often ask if he can have something from the pantry and then I will either instruct him, no, it is not an appropriate time for pantry food, go to the fridge food, or I will ask him, have you had anything healthy from the fridge today? And he'll think about it and he'll say, oh no, I think I'll have carrots or an apple or something. So that dairies is how I have navigated discussing body positivity, weight loss, body image confidence with my son who is only 10 and a half years old. If you are in charge of young, small humans, please talk to me in the section beyond the veil. I'm very curious. How have you navigated this discussion? Do you even address this discussion? If you are fortunate enough to have gone through the small human stage and you now have grown humans, please share your wisdom. Was Has this ever been anything that you ever worried about? I need some solidarity here. <laughs> Coming up on Friday is the collab video with the Facebook group that I am a part of. We are all going to be sharing videos about things that we have purchased that are supporting us on our weight loss journey. So it's like a big group shopping haul. Be sure to be subscribed and tune in for that because that's Whenever the group uploads, it's always an exciting day. Saturday. Saturday is my week 16 progress report. And as long as life doesn't smack me in the face, I will be live at 10 a.m. Eastern time. I know that that's probably pushing it a little bit early, but it is the only time that I really can guarantee that I can be on. So I do hope that you can join us. If not, I completely understand. It's okay, but I will be here right here in the room of requirement live at 10 a.m. Eastern time on Saturday. And I do hope to see you there. And next week, Wednesday, yes, I am still planning to upload something next Wednesday. I am determined to not let my life spiral out of control. Wednesday, I want to talk about how to navigate food choices when the people you live with don't eat like you, because I certainly do not eat like my boys. So I'm going to talk about that. If any of that sounds interesting or exciting, please do not forget to subscribe before you leave. Give this video a like to let me know that you weren't annoyed. <laughs> Catch me on Instagram and or Fitbit, and I will see you on Friday. Bye, dearies.